Rub up your engines! Today, I'm gonna talk about the end of Jaguar Land Rover. Now it gets really complicated. The company's now called Jaguar Land Rover and Tata, the Indian company, bought it. The Chinese state-owned company, Cherry, they own 50% of it in China. It gets really complicated. So here's a little history. Jaguar was started a long time ago by this English dude who made sidecars for motorcycles. Then he decided to make cars. And he ended up making cutting edge sports cars that all over the world were known as fast, reliable cars. And Land Rover started in the 1940s after World War II. It was the British attempt to make a Jeep. They saw the American Willys Overlanders Jeeps from the war and they thought, heck, we'll make a vehicle like that. It'll be real handy in England and in all our colonies. They made great little Jeepy vehicle. They called Land Rovers four-cylinder engines. Hey, some of those early ones are still going around. They were solid built little jeepy things. But as time went on, both companies kind of got away from their roots. Now, as things were going downhill for both companies, an even further downhill thing happened. In 1968, both of them came together the first time under British Leyland. And if you know anything about cars, British Leyland was a gigantic disaster. Kind of the American equivalent of AMC Motors. It's, it's kind of a similar story there. Neither of them lasted all that long. And once British Leyland fell apart, Land Rover was taken over by BMW and Jaguar was taken over by Ford Motor Company. Then in 2000, Ford acquired Land Rover from BMW. They didn't want them anymore. And then in 2008, the Indian company Tata, the one that makes that really cheap car in India, and Tata merged them and they're now called Jaguar Land Rover Limited. Now Tata put billions into trying to rejuvenate Jaguar and Land Rover and it worked for a short while, but then of course, the crap started to hit the fan. Quality still wasn't that great, let's face it. Jaguar and Land Rover, in the last few decades, they've been known as some of the poorest made vehicles on the planet. And of course, the worldwide recession didn't help them any. You got high-end Jaguars and high-end sports utility vehicles, so all their sales went down. And then, Cherry, C-H-E-R-Y, they dumped another $2.78 billion into them. There's a joint venture in China, that's 50% Tata and 50% Cherry, the Chinese, and they're building them in China now. Now, a bunch of sage people saw that, okay, Land Rovers, they're SUVs. Americans love SUVs. A lot of people like SUVs. Why don't they just dump Jaguar and only make the Land Rovers? Because Jaguar was dragging them down. People aren't that into luxury cars that fall apart all the time. <laughs> but the Land Rovers, even though they can be horridly built vehicles, people are nuts about them for some reason. There were rumors they were going to sell Jaguar to another company, but uh, so far the rumors have proven false. Now you got a really weird situation in China. They're making Jaguar SUVs, compact SUVs. They're still listing, they start at like $36,000 a piece. But strangely enough, if you watched any of my earlier videos, MG Morris Garages that made the MG sports cars ages ago, they got bought by one Chinese company, then they got bought by another Chinese company, they completely stopped making sports cars, and they make compact SUVs that people like. They're just starting to sell them in Europe at the end of 2019. And these MG SUVs, hilariously enough, the Jaguar SUVs and the MG SUVs are both based from companies that originally made sports cars, but now we're making SUVs. The MG version starts at $18,000. Jaguar SUV starts at $36,000. So, hey, they're both made in China. Which one would you buy? I mean, what's in a name these days? If they start selling the MG SUVs and the Jaguar SUVs in the United States, they haven't yet, but if they do, buy the MG one. Take off the MG stuff, put Jaguar on it instead. <laughs> they look pretty much the same too. <laughs> because in the world today with the internet, people learn things really fast. Why would they pay twice as much for an SUV made in China for Jaguar when they can get an MG SUV 
Made in China for half the price. <laughs> now sure they're all jumping on a bandwagon to sell these SUVs and as you notice they're making them smaller too. These are compact SUVs, the ones that they're made in China. They're still making the big giant monsters in England. I mean for how long who knows but their main focus is on smaller ones and if you got a company that's notorious for having weak products that fall apart and have horrendous resale value like Jaguar. Why would you pay twice as much for one of their little SUVs as you could for an MG that was made in China? These days there's only so far that a name can go when it comes to sales if you ask me. People around the world are wising up quite a bit. The Chinese make really good ones. They can sell them to the Chinese. They have a huge market there and if they sell them in Europe and people will buy them. But from my experience with the European that money's tight with those people. And if they had a choice of getting a Jaguar SUV or an MG. They both have English names anyways. And the MG cost half as much. Guess which one they're going to buy. So as far as their regular gasoline and diesel powered vehicles. I don't predict much of them. I don't think they have much of a future. They did come out with a notice. Starting in the year 2020, Jaguar and Land Rover are only going to produce all electric or hybrid vehicles. So there's a new ball game going out there. They're kind of playing both sides to the middle, especially with the Land Rovers, because Americans love the big giant SUVs, right? The rest of the world is talking about let's go electric, hybrid, make smaller cars like the smaller Jaguar SUVs. United States, people will probably still be buying the big ones. I warn people not to buy them because they're endless money pits, but I've had many customers that had lots of money, rich people. They go out and they buy one of those stupid things. Things. The status thing. I even had an older customer. He had a girlfriend that was less than half his age. He bought her a used one. I checked it out and found like 60 things wrong. But I told him those just minor electrical stuff. They all do that. But you want to save a little bit of money buying a used one, go ahead. I told him not to buy one. But he did anyways because she wanted one. But in the overall scheme of things, if they are only going to make electric and hybrid vehicles, who knows? They might be successful at that. But as for their normal cars, 2018 to 2019, Jaguar Land Rover lost over four billion dollars. <laughs> it's not a money maker anymore. It was for Tata in the very beginning when they took over and put money in and modernized stuff. It's very short term. They got in a situation where hey the economy's booming people are buying this stuff but now things are getting tighter people start thinking look at the money that they're losing with that. I can see why Tata signed a 50-50 deal with the Chinese to give them 2.76 billion dollars of money <laughs> to get things rolling again. And of course they still make. A bunch of Jaguars and Land Rovers in England and they're all worried about this Brexit thing because a lot of the parts come from Europe to England to be built. Who knows? Could be like a lot of English stuff. They might just stop making it in England. End up doing the whole thing in China and forgetting trying to build them in England in the first place. Just like Tata, the Indian company, buying Jaguar and Land Rover. It could be kind of a colonial revenge. They used to be the colonies of England. Now they took over their fancy cars. Hey, it's probably in the back of their mind somewhere. So now you know a little bit more about Jaguar Land Rover. Full of a lot of ups and downs. Seems to be going down now, but who knows? Maybe electrification, if it occurs fast enough, quick enough, we'll save them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.